Good evening and welcome to the pr special presentations of the City of Moreno Valley on October 2nd at 5.34 p.m. Our first presentation is going to be our business spotlight and the name of the business is Churito Loco. If we can please roll the DVD. At Churrito Loco, we are taking churros, ice cream, and funnel cakes to another level. We specialize in uniquely inspired desserts and snacks. Come and see why our social media amigos are raving about Churrito Loco. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for exciting specials and new menu items. Check us out on Instagram.com slash Churrito Loco for more information. It's time to get loco for churros. <laughs> okay. All right, if we can have uh, the owner, Marvin Chavez, come up here, please. <laughs> um, just want to say a few words here before I present the certificate. Uh, living up to its name, uh, Churrito Loco has uh, food from Marina Valley and across the Inland Empire, has people going crazy uh, for their innovative, uh, made from scratch churros and Mexican snacks. Located at 25030 Alessandra Boulevard, Churrito Loco offers exciting twists on classic snack foods like ilote, ilote, or corn on the cob, served street style with mayo, cheese, butter, and hot Cheetos, or funnel cake topped with horchata ice cream and fruity pebbles. <laughs> okay. But the real crowd pleaser is in. Uh, is in the name, the homemade churros made fresh to order in bite-sized poppers ready to dip in your favorite sauce like chocolate or Nutella. So I'll have to stop by there. This looks really good. Sounds really good. But it doesn't stop there. You can also have them in a pinwheel-shaped ice cream sandwich with flavors like bubble gum or the seasonal hit pumpkin spice latte. Or if you are a churro purist, you can also have one served in the long iconic shape with ridges covered in cinnamon and sugar and filled with guava. And then Bavarian? Bavarian cream. Bavarian cream and or dulce de leche. Oh, that one sounds really good. Oh, du awesome. Yeah, dulce de leche, yeah. So today, uh, we recognize Churrito Loco, where you can let your imagination run wild. Okay, so congratulations again. Thank you so much. On behalf of the city council in my office, I want to present you this beautiful certificate. And then here are the, uh, the videos as well, so that way you can share you, through your social media as well. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah. Good evening, business. everybody. First of all, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate the opportunity I've got with the city of Moreno Valley. Everybody has been wonderful to me to come in. What I like about the city is that everybody comes in when they're eating. They're, I like to see them smile. Every, it's a place for everybody. Had families, someone could be on a date. Whatever it is, I just want to see that smile at the end of the day because it's sweets, which I like sweets. Now they don't have to go to theme parks, just come to Myrna Valley, and we have it there. So pretty much thank you for everybody, and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much, and thank you for bringing your business to Moreno Valley, and it really, really has very rich dessert, so you got to visit at least once. Our next proclamation is recognizing National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. If we can please have the representatives from Trinity Baptist at the uh, microphone, please. You can all come up, please join us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And um, you're very welcome by the city council today as we uh, recognize National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Every October, we as a nation take the month to think about the lives that have been touched by breast cancer. We remember loved ones who have faced this disease. Some have successfully overcome the disease, but too many have lost their battle or forever been altered. Breast cancer research has grown exponentially over the past two decades, which has greatly lowered the number of fatalities caused by this disease. While the d decrease in the impact of breast cancer can be counted as a success, there is still much work to be done when it comes to further reducing the impact of breast cancer on American lives. Increased awareness and outreach has led to a greater screening, but there are still members of the population who will greatly benefit from further outreach efforts and education. Further research is also needed to fully understand the causes and develop a wider array of treatments for the disease. The month of October is dedicated to raising awareness and fundraising for research and public outreach programs. Every early detection and reduced risk through some lifestyle choices are key factors in increasing survival rates for people diagnosed with breast cancer. And every survival, survival is a victory. This October, as the City Council proclaims National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we are proclaiming a future with more victories and eventually a future free from breast cancer. So with that, we're gonna present you with a proclamation for, on behalf of the City Council and the City of Moreno Valley. It's a very nice proclamation. Please say something. I'll hold it for you. I can hold it. Okay. You know, first I would like to thank, we thank God for everything that we do in Moreno Valley. Uh, Trinity Baptist Church is a church where everybody is somebody. And uh, these are nurses from, from uh, Trinity Baptist Church, each and every one of us. And our goal this year is to reach someone and to be able to help someone through our breast cancer effort. Uh, we will be having our Pink Sunday on the 8th of October. That's a day that we has designated as our, pink, as our Breast Cancer Awareness Day. We also will be having our first breast cancer walk at Trinity Baptist Church, and we are expecting uh, Councilman Geiber to be there. And <laughs> dressed in pink, and uh, anyone else, you're quite welcome at any time to come to Trinity Baptist Church, a church where everybody is somebody. Thank you. Thank you very much.
High fives, the cross. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We got the best city. We do. The best city. Thank you so much to Trinity Baptist for being here and accepting the proclamation on breast cancer awareness. Next on the agenda is the Public Power Week proclamation presented by Council Member Ulysses Cabrera. Good evening, everyone. Uh, would all uh, Moreno Valley utility staff please come up front and join us? Chairman Alvarado, everyone, everyone come up here, please. Over. Okay. okay, we all fit. <laughs> We're just getting comfortable. Okay, well, good evening everyone. Uh, tonight we have the distinct honor of celebrating Moreno Valley's very own electric utility by presenting this Public Power Week proclamation. Uh, here to accept the proclamation is Moreno Valley Treasurer Marshall Ironman. Moreno Valley Utility Division Manager, uh, Janet Olko. Moreno Valley Electric Utility is the product of two years of extensive research and consideration and has been providing power to Moreno Valley for over 13 years. MVU is community owned and not for profit, which gives our citizens the opportunity to have a direct impact on the decisions that affect our community on a daily basis. Our utility commissioners and MVU staff all work tirelessly to make decisions that meet the energy needs of our growing community to help foster that growth and to do so in a financially responsible manner. Moreno Valley Electric Utility offers energy efficiency incentives and a solar rebate program which encourages conservation-minded energy usage and the expansion of the use of renewable energy sources in a way that is affordable to homeowners. Additionally, there is the higher mobile utility incentive, which helps business owners save money on their electric utility simply by hiring Moreno Valley residents. The proclamation of Public Power Week is a recognition of the hardworking people who help to keep the lights on in our homes and businesses, and the citizens who take a vested interest in how, much com how such community services are provided and act to ensure that our city is poised to be an innovator in serving the needs of our community. We have the proclamation right here standing amongst us, and it reads, Whereas the citizens of the city of Moreno Valley place high value on local control over community services, and therefore have chosen to operate a community-minded, locally controlled, not-for-profit electric utility that allows consumers and owners to have a direct say in utilities operations and policies, and whereas Moreno Valley Electric Utility is a valuable community asset that contributes substantially to business development and the well-being of local citizens through energy efficiency, customer service, environmental protection, economic development, and safety awareness. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the City Council of the City of Moreno Valley, on behalf of its citizens and staff, does hereby proclaim October 1st through the 7th of 2017 as Public Power Week recognizing Moreno Valley Electric Utility for its contributions to the community and to educate its consumer owners, policymakers, and employees on the benefits of public power and encourage members of the community to join hands with more than 2,000 other public power systems in the United States in this celebration. Okay. So would you like to say a couple of words? Yes. Um, just a couple brief words. 
Uh, the Marina Valley Utility has focused a lot on economic development and reliability for the city, uh, and I'm very gracious to the staff, the city council, the utility commission uh, to accomplish these goals along with the executive management and city manager. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for all of the support in the Marina Valley Utility and how they continue to serve this community. Okay, our final presentation is the Kitchen Substation Grand Opening, <coughs> which will be presented by Councilman Elises Cabrera. Um, did you want to just say a couple of words? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Mr. Cabrera for allowing me to speak. First of all, I want to say I'm very proud and very honored uh, to be working with this staff, and especially with Jeanette and her team, with uh, Michelle giving me and our council the opportunity to move forward on this project in particular. Um, economic development and the rest of you. Uh, I just want to share the history since I'm the only sitting council member that knows the history of the hard work and effort that went into this project that they're going to be cutting the ribbon I believe on the third, am I correct Jeanette? The third of, of November. So um, this plaque is, is, is a good commemoration. So a little background history in October of 2014 the project plan was approved to purchased the property for the kitchen substation, understanding that it was being, being used exactly for economic development and to fulfill the needs of our city and our, our area. Um, when I was elected and uh, the mayor at that time, Jesse Molina, and I sat on the economic development and the finance subcommittees, and I was also on the utility commission, we then transpired to go finding a way to purchase this project without encumbering the city or the Marina Valley utility. Uh, so working very closely together, especially with Rick Teichert at the time, we came up with a financing plan that was unconventional by the city standards, but it was important that we didn't put any more stress on the city and on the Marina Valley utility. So over the course of several months, we hashed out a plan that actually worked and it functioned well, and I'm proud to say, and I'm proud of you all for us all working together, like I said, and Michelle giving us the backing to do this. Um, we've actually been able to complete this project within time, I know, but we didn't approve that bond until around November. So it's been about two years that this project's been completed in and under budget um, and using a bond financing less than what was anticipated to begin with saving $1.3 million in bond financing. So it was an unconventional way, a lot of nervousness going into it, but uh, they've accomplished it and we work together as a team and the staff. And I'm just saying I'm honored and I'm proud that we're going to be have finally after those, these two years we'll be doing that ribbon cutting. So congratulations, Jeanette. Congratulations, Marshall. Congratulations, Je because Mike isn't here. So you get to take that congratulations as his envision. And thank you very much, Michelle Dawson. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilmember Gaiba. Um, I would also like to um, 
thank uh, our current mayor, uh, Dr. Action Gutierrez. He is the previous council member for District 4, um, which is where the cup station, substation is located. And so him, along with uh, the rest of the council that he's worked with, uh, has been able to, to bring uh, businesses, companies, uh, residential development, and which is the reason why uh, the substation was needed uh, to provide power and energy to that area. And so I would just like to read a couple of, uh, a couple of words here for the grand opening of the power station. Um, with the expansion of the city of Moreno Valley over the past several years, both in population and in economic development, the Moreno Valley utility has seen a significant growth in customers and demand for electricity, especially in the south industrial area. This increased demand prompted the construction of the Kitching Power Substation, which will serve some of the largest business employers in Moreno Valley, including Amazon, Decker's Outdoor, Procter & Gamble, Ross, Floor & Decor, Karma Automotive, Waste Management, and 2,000 residential customers. This 80 megawatt power station produces enough electricity to power 60,000 homes and was made possible through cooperation between the City Council, the Utilities Commission, and the executive team. Now, Marshall Ironman will walk us through a brief presentation of the substation. Marshall. Thank you, Council Member. As the slides come up briefly, um, one of the things with the utility substation is obviously we can't have the public down walking around it, but we wanted to walk you through these slides so you can get pictures of the transformers, the switch gears, uh, the switch yard, all of those integral pieces that many of us don't really get to see or touch down there. Uh, the big thing that this does is it takes 115 kV from Edison's distribution lines, brings it into the switch yard, it uh, tr or converts it into 12 kV out to our citizens. And one of the things that have kept Moreno Valley Utility very reliable is the fact that once those powers come through our um, substation, they go underground. And that saves us in many of the emergencies where we're not seeing the blackouts, we have the increased reliability. Uh, so with that, uh, tonight we're actually going to do the ribbon cutting. The final energiz energization of the project will be done on November 3rd, uh, but as with it, we're substantially complete, we do have the plaque. We wanted to dedicate that tonight. Uh, so with that, I'd like to invite all of the council members down here. Thank you, Jeanette, and thank you, Moreno Valley Utilities. And that concludes our special presentations. The regular council meeting will convene in about 10 minutes. Thank you.
Good evening and welcome to the joint meeting of the City Council of the City of Marina Valley, Marina Valley Community Services District, City as Successor Agency for the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Marina Valley, Marina Valley Housing Authority and the Board of Library Trustees. The City Council receives a separate stipend for CSD meetings. I now call this meeting to order on October 2nd, 2017 at 6, 11 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Rafael. Okay. Looks like he's volunteering. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be given by President Kendall Shumway from Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Also, please remain standing for a moment of silence uh, for the tragedy in Las Vegas as well. With everybody standing, um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we, a few of thy children, pause and petition thee at this time of great grief and sorrow and pray for healing. There are those in our community who have been touched personally uh, by this tragedy in Las Vegas, but we have also been touched and are sorrow, sorrowful for these events. Pray for the victims. We pray for their families. All those across the world who mourn with us and mourn with those that mourn. May this bring us closer together in our shared values of of caring and feeling. At the same time, we, we pray for the words that are behind our city council, those of in God we trust. We do believe that that is something that can heal. Healing of senseless acts, that it will bring hope where there is hopelessness. We also pray that we will, in turn, look to our neighbors, those around us that, that we interact with and associate with, and that we will look for opportunities to, to help those that are in need for whatever that need is. We pray for wisdom for our leaders and that we each will have wisdom in our own lives and that together we can build and grow together in a shared sense of community. We rely upon thee. We rely upon thy son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful for his healing power. These things we pray and humbly ask for and petition thee for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, uh, President Shumway, uh, for um, the invocation. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, sir, Madam. Yes, sir, Mayor. Council Member Gaiba? I'm here. Council Member Cabrera? Here. Let the record reflect Council Member Marquez is absent. Mayor Pro Tembaca? Here. Mayor Gutierrez? Present. Um, staff introductions, please. Pat Hawk is not a city clerk. Marshall Ironman, Chief Financial Officer, City Treasurer. Martin Kozanowicz, City Attorney. Michelle Dawson, City Manager. Tom DeSantis, Assistant City Manager. Jackie Melendez, Senior Project Manager. Michael Lloyd, Interim City Engineer. Joel Ontiveros, Chief of Police. Ben Alonzo, Division Manager, Parks and Community Services. Alan Brock, Community Development Director. Okay, thank you, staff. Uh, just a friendly reminder uh, to the audience uh, that the city is currently offering Spanish translation services. If anyone is interested, in this feature, the devices can be checked out in the back of the room. Entonces, si uh, quieren escuchar algo en, en uh, español, uh, tenemos los servicios uh, allá atrás. Okay. Before we hear public comments this evening, I ask and encourage everyone participating to keep 
their comments uh, respectful towards each other, especially the individuals at the podium. Um, and also to keep your comments to three minutes uh, for each speaker and that you refrain from duplicating comments already made by others, other than to note that you agree with the comment. Public comments on matters on the agenda will be taken up as the item is called for business between staff's report and city council deliberation. Those wishing to speak on any subject not on the agenda uh, may do so now. Those wishing to speak should complete and submit a blue speaker slip to the bailiff, and there is also a three minute time limit per person. All remarks and questions shall be addressed to the presiding officer or to the council as a whole. Uh, the city clerk will call three names at a time. Please be ready when we call um, your names. And then in order to preserve uh, the meeting decorum, council and staff will not respond during public comments. Any council comments or questions to staff will be addressed during the council closing comments. And if there's any concerns or issues, we'll make sure to take down your name and then we'll respond appropriately. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, how many speakers do we have tonight? We have three so far. Okay, go ahead and Rafa call all three. Rafael Burgueras, Bob Palomares, and Lindsay Robinson. Good evening, Rafael. Good evening, Mayor, Council members, staff, guests, in Moreno Valley. I came to say thank you to the many men and women that pray for Puerto Rico. Because I just finally got a hurt. I just finally heard from my father yesterday, since the day they had the hurricane. He wandered up in the hospital. Now he's in home, and it's going to take until the 23rd he can get a flight out of Puerto Rico. Think about that. That's how long. Everything's booked. Can't get out of Puerto Rico. Think about the thousands and thousands of men and women that want to leave Puerto Rico now because there's nothing there. And what's there, people are fighting for. And when family sends money, they're being robbed. Yes, they are. I have a friend that works for the government, a personal friend, and he tells us what's going on, and he sends us pictures of what's going on. So there's a lot of things that you don't know about what's going on in Puerto Rico because the media doesn't show everything yet because of the power situation. So there's always the benefit of the doubt that I'll give them. But I want to thank the men and women that go to church or stay home <laughs> for their prayers. Because at least mine got answered. And there's so many more that need to get answered. So thank you, Marino Valley. I'm proud to be a Marino Valley resident. And I'm proud to be here in California with you. And the men and women, the mayor, the council members, the staff, the residents, even those that I oppose, I will always love and care for also. Because I know they pray in their own way, and I'm grateful for them also. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Robert. Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Staff. First, I want to say, haven't been here for a while, but uh, man, I've seen all the good things that the city has been doing. Staff working hard. They've accomplished a lot. I, I was thinking, man, they better slow down. Got a lot done, and it's because of, I could say personally, because I've been kind of looking at it, the three in the center here of this council. But uh, I also want to talk about, you know, where is the respect and the morality of people that can uh, criticize when we have, uh, like, the grito. I know there was a lot of criticism to some of the, to the mayor, mayor pro temp, because I seen that and I heard it and, you know, there's people with a lot of hate in them. There's no room for that. You know, we're trying to get going here, and we're doing a good job. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, we got to celebrate all cultures that live in this city and in this country. It's what it's built on, different cultures. You know, it's, uh, it's disturbing to hear that, you know, but it's been going on forever, and it'll continue because some people were just raised that way. 
that, like, it's not in their DNA, but they act like it is. You know, you're taught those things. God didn't put that in you when he created you. And another thing, like the ladies from the Trinity Baptist Church were talking about cancer awareness, which is great. You know, the NFL is being criticized for taking a knee for what they believe. They want attention and awareness to what they're talking about, not disrespect to a flag or a country. See, they'll criticize the NFL for that, but they won't turn around and say how much millions of dollars they have raised for breast awareness for cancer. They pour millions and millions of dollars. So, you know, if we're going to get to the bottom of it, don't just run your mouth and try to make people believe, you know, like, hate to say it, our president is the one that's leading the racist war. He's bringing a lot of division. He's already brought it. He had, I don't know how many days to get ready to implement an action plan to go to Puerto Rico, and he waited nine days or eight days later. The hurricane, they seen it on radar. There it was. Why didn't he move in? Well, they're surrounded by water. Well, of course, we've got boats, large ships, military. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Next speaker. Good evening, Lindsay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm here to belatedly thank Mr. Marquez for coming out and helping on the Arts Commission float for the 4th of July. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Mr. Marquez, Mr. Gaiba, and Michelle Dawson because they've already contributed to our silent auction baskets for the upcoming Oktoberfest, and hope some of you others will join them and you can drop your baskets off at the conference desk. I have some flyers for Oktoberfest. It's this Saturday, 10 to 3. It's free. There's exhibitors who are selling their artwork and crafts. Uh, there's a kids' fun zone with uh, arts and crafts activities there and a bike rodeo. There's food vendors, performers all morning, uh, afternoon on the stage. And of course, you can come bid, bid on your favorite baskets out in the lobby. And all the money goes back to the Arts Commission to help with their arts stuff. And since I have a little more time, um, I've been through all the uh, applications for the commissions and boards that were done ahead of time, you know, by their deadline. And we have a lot of qualified people that I hope you'll have time soon to get through and fill the vacancies. And I'd also like the city staff to check the veracity of these applications before they're appointed, because I know on the 9-5 application there was a false statement. And the city's rules say that, you know, you could be dismissed. Well, we don't want to dismiss people. We want everybody possible to get involved. So, you know, if you'd like my opinions, I can share my analysis, Mr. Mayor. But, you know, I know you can do it, and we just hope you'll fill those vacancies with the folks that, you know, applied by the deadline. Um, a few other things I've been hearing from residents is, you know, um, we'd like to know when we can start helping on the general plan because years ago, the public was involved early on for the whole entire process. And also, um, we'd like report outs on the League of California Cities, because Mr. Gaiba used to give thorough reports on the votes and everything like that. So we hope this will continue with Ms. Bach and Mr. Cabrera. Thank you again, guys, and I hope you'll donate. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Amy? Luis Palomares. Luis Palomares. Wow, um, what Bob said and Raphael said, you know, Good touches evening. my heart because it's it's the truth facts. And it's so sad that we're already at the 12th day that they don't have a lot of need, things they need there still. 65% don't have water, 90% don't have light in Puerto Rico, but our fake president said, said it's surrounded by water. What does all that mean? I don't get it. You know, because it's Puerto Rico. And he said, well, they should pay their bills. I don't know what channels some of the people watch here, but I'm watching the balance news, and wow, it, it's amazing. 
this man is dividing and conquering our nation, and it's so sad. It, it's really sad that uh, people in Puerto Rico have to be begging, begging for what they need because the mayor of Puerto Rico was on the, on the news the other day. In the, in the very beginning, they're saying, oh, yeah, he's sending. We're getting this. We're going to get that. It's on the way. You know, even the, the, um, the governor said that. But now, you know, she's tired of waiting. She said, what are we, third-class citizens? We're begging you. What are we, dogs? That's what she said. Dogs, I mean, these people should have had what they need a long time ago. Like Bob said, they already knew it was coming, that Hurricane Maria, and they're just dragging their feet on it. Raphael's father's in the hospital, got out of the hospital. He's 85 years old. How bad is that, that they can't get help? The hospitals, everybody needs help over there. They don't got enough generators to keep it going. They got pallets and pallets of trucks there, but they can't get them. We could send a man to the moon. How is it that we can't do this? How is it we can't send more people in there? Wow, it, it, it just shocks me to death that this is, it's a sad day for our country. Our country, they're part of our country. Has everybody forgot it? I don't, I don't understand this mentality, this me, 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 and forget everybody else, but we got a fake president running that White House. We got a bigot and a racist running the White House. I don't care what anybody says, because his actions prove it over and over and over again. It's not an isolated incident. It's all the time. He says, oh, they're disrespecting the flag because the, they took a knee. How are they disrespecting the flag and the anthem and our soldiers? They're not. They're trying to bring a message across. But he spins it. And he even called them SOBs, the whole word. Fire them. They're SOBs. How dare him? He don't have no respect. He don't have no respect for our flag or our nation or our country. All he wants to start is wars and capitalize off being the president of the United States because he's making the big bucks right now. And it's sad, but it's true. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, any more speakers? Okay. No more speakers. In closing the public comments there. Would any council members like to make their reports and comments instead of closing at this time? Okay, seeing none. We are now going to move to our joint consent calendars, sections A through D on the agenda. All items, excuse me, listed under the consent calendar, sections A, B, C, and D are considered to be routine and non-controversial and may be enacted by one motion unless a member of the City Council, Community Services District, City of Successor Agency, Housing Authority or the Library Trustees request that an item be removed for separate action. The motion to adopt the consent calendars is deemed to be a separate motion by each agency and shall be so recorded by the City Clerk. Items withdrawn for report or discussion will be heard after public hearing items. Um, if you like an item for um, uh, discussion, just uh, go ahead and let me know. Or for separate action, press your, your speaker request. Okay, seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any public comments for the consent calendar? None. Okay, I entertain a motion by council, oops, by council to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Okay, motion by Mayor Patim Baca, second by Council Member Gaiba. Okay, it moves and it's uh, approved 4-0. Uh, Passes, uh, we, we, we're going on to public hearings. Questions or comments from the public on the public hearing matter are limited to uh, five minutes per individual and must pertain to the subject under consideration. Uh, those wishing to speak uh, should complete and submit a goldenrod speaker slip to the sergeant in arms. Um, so we have the first item and it would actually uh, be uh, three minutes. Uh, the first item is the public hearing to adopt substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2017-2018 action plan. And we'll have Marshall Ironman, uh, Director of the Financial and Management Services. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. Uh, on September 5th, 2017, the City Council approved an initial direction for the development of a homeless to work program. Uh, the report this evening recommends that the City Council conduct a public hearing to update the fiscal year 17-18 annual action plan to add one program funded by the Emergency Solutions Grant 
for homeless outreach and intake services and one program funded by the Community Development Block Grant for neighborhood cleanup. <coughs> the combination of these two programs will be the foundation and funding of the city's homeless to work program. Uh, the comprehensive homeless to work program would help prepare participants to transition to an active workforce by providing temporary employment while connecting them with social service resources to help overcome obstacles to their pursuit of gainful employment in permanent housing. Uh, the Salvation Army has expressed interest in the program and submitted a written application to participate as the community nonprofit partner for the city. Uh, based on the Salvation Army's past experience with HUD funded programs and providing services to the homeless, it is recommended to move forward with this partnership. Additionally, the Salvation Army will be able to provide the $80,000 of in-kind support for the program as required for the ESG grant. Uh, and they have additional personnel resources to assist in providing proper support for the homeless workforce. The city has also received different levels of interest and support from other organizations and we will continue to pursue separate efforts with them to provide assistance for the homeless in different means. Um, following the city council's action tonight to fund the homeless to work program, the substantial amendment for the CDBG ESG funding will be submitted to HUD for their approval. Uh, following HUD's approval, which may take up to 30 days for their process, uh, we'll be finalizing the contract with the Salvation Army. Now, during those 30 days, we'll be working through all the final details so we're ready to move forward as soon as we get the approval from HUD. Um, and one of the things that once the City Council's approved, uh, any efforts by the Salvation Army, they're still able to recover costs for that time period. Uh, so with HUD's approval, we hope to begin the first cleanup project uh, and employing the homeless by the beginning of November. Uh, with that, that concludes my report, but I did want to also note that we do have representatives from the Salvation Army here tonight as well, uh, Lieutenant David Kane and Lieutenant Kelly Kane. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marshall. Um, okay, um, we'll go ahead and start with um, council questions of staff, or even if there's any questions uh, to um, the Salvation Army as well. You could just press your um, speaker button. Okay, I'm gonna go to public testimony. Madam Clerk. Yes, Rafael Burgueras. Anyone else, or is it just Rafael? Just Rafael. Oh. Good evening once again, Mayor. Good evening, Rafael. Staff. Council members, staff, and residents, my apologies for skipping. Um, one of the nice things about getting the agenda ahead of time when you sign up, you get an opportunity to go through it. And the best part is when you go to the packet. The packet tells you a lot about the program. And Marshall mentioned some things but there's other things that he should have also mentioned that's very important to this program, okay? And I love that he also mentioned Salvation Army because we count on Salvation Army to fulfill their promises when they ask us for donations because that's where we help them to help others when they can't help themselves. Because there's a lot of people that need help and sometimes they forget to help themselves and this is what this program is about. Okay, and, and as, as I went through the pages, and I, I forgot mine, but I'm glad you guys have yours, and thank you, city um, clerk, because she does a wonderful job, Pat, for putting the stuff up there, so I was able to look at it again. It talks about temporary work for the homeless that forgot how to go to back to work. And one of the things when we give our grant money to the Salvation Army is to help them to at least work two days a week, five hours a day, and they'll make minimum wage so they don't have to beg or hold up a sign. You know, it's a sad thing when you see um, young people and elders and um, vets holding up signs because they need additional help. I mean, you know, two days a week can help a human being get back in their right, right, in their right mind once again, and I know the Salvation Army, because I knew a brother that lived in Long Beach, depending on them, 
to help him with his addiction when he had it. They were the only ones that would give him a hand and a place to live when they needed him. So I know the Salvation Army works because I've seen it at hand. So I'm glad it's them that are going to be running the program for us so we can count on them, okay? It's not a lot of money, but it is a grant that has been given to us to use wisely. I hope you guys decide to vote on it. Uh, if if Gaiba, I'm not going to but if um, Marquez was here, I think he would have approved it. He's a vet. He knows what the vets are going through. And um, he would have voted yes if he was here to make sure that the vets and everyone else that needs a chance to go back to work and to clean up their lives will get an opportunity. I did. I know. Thank you, Rafael. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the hearing. And um, any deliberation, please uh, press your button. Okay. Um, and so I'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations number two and three. Okay, moved by uh, Councilmember Gaiba. Second. Okay, second by Councilmember Carrera. Tim. Okay, and it's approved 4-0, so awesome. Okay, okay we're going to go to item uh, F, uh, which there's no item there. So item G is G1. This item uh, was the uh, Marina Valley Logistics Center. Uh, on September 19th, the item was continued by council to the November 7th council meeting. So it's just on here as a procedure just to let you guys know that it was continued again. Um, so H1 is uh, going to have... A May, do, we have, do we have two people that submitted slips to talk on H1? Okay, I believe since that item was moved to November 7th, city attorney? That is correct. The item was moved to um, the 7th. So can uh, they speak November. at that time? I, I, I think that they have a choice um, since the item technically wasn't on the agenda, the time to would have uh, time to speak on it would have been at the non-agendized non item. So they have a choice. To, you have the choice to either allow them to speak under that um, because of that reason, because that wasn't made clear well, originally. Okay. Okay. Well, because it wasn't made clear, uh, we'll go ahead and let them speak. Rafael Burgueras and Kathleen Dale. Yeah, the, what happened was they just put it on the agenda just to let people know that it's going to be on the 7th, even though we approved it already that it's going to be on the 7th. Um, but I think that might have confused people. People were thinking that probably we were going to speak on it. Even again, so everyone. Way, go ahead. So I, uh, I kind of uh, I'll skip it. And I'll save it for November 7th. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the best thing to do. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, and just so you know, that way it can be on the record. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I'll wait. Thank you. Okay. You don't have to wait. Okay. Good evening, Kathleen. Thank you. I'll be very quick as well. I don't think there's any confusion. And last week you had the decision to move it to November 7th in this same place on the agenda, and you allowed people to speak. So I don't understand what the confusion is. Um, First of all, when you heard this project the first time, I'm losing track of the dates now, um, you continued a public hearing to a date certain on October 2nd. So just as a procedural thing, this should be on the public hearing part of your agenda for a further continuance. Um, and then I just wanted to ask a question because when you talked about this last time and decided to further continue it from tonight to November 7th, you said you were going to be reaching out to the residents to speak, and I'm not aware of any residents who have been reached out to, so it would be nice if uh, you could, at the end, give a little report on what you've done or what you intend to do. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, just to clear the record, mm -hmm. Council closed the public hearing 
um, at the meeting that this item was uh, presented. The only item that was continued was the deliberation. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, on the item on when it's November seventh, it's just going to be council deliberation because the public comment periods was were already closed. And that's what the city attorney was just saying. All right, so we're going to go to reports. H1 City Council reports on regional activities. We have Mayor Pro Tem Baca for March Joint Powers Commission. Tonight I'm providing an update on the recent March Joint Powers Commission meeting that was held on uh, September 21st and the 27th. Uh, the, the commission approved several actions related to the parcel delivery terminal on 126.2 acres at uh, 20 2801 Cromeria within the Meridian Business Park South Campus. We agreed to the sale of the general old golf course to the Veterans Administration for $12.5 million for the expansion of the Riverside National Cemetery. And we also heard an update from the U.S. Veterans Hospital project. They are 76% complete with their first phase and they anticipate completion by January 1st. Yes. On the RCTC Commission, uh, the IE commuter announced this year's rideshare week is October 2nd through the 6th. The two biggest benefits of participating in a rideshare program are it helps the environment and saves money. However, many solo drivers still need an extra incentive to give it a try. So IE commuter is incentivizing commuters to go green, save green. Commuters can sign up and pledge to take the bus, train, carpool, van pool, bike or walk to work at least one day during rideshare week and have the opportunity to win great prizes. IE Commuter is a program of the Riverside County Transportation Commission with the objective to reduce traffic and improve air quality throughout the region. For more information, please visit iecommuter.org or call 1-800, I'm sorry, 1-866-RIDESHARE. Thank you. For the Western Riverside Council of Governments, um, there was actually, this was on the October 7th, there was act second, there was a LED holiday light exchange and energy efficiency uh, program that was done. Uh, WRCOG will also enter into an agreement with Placeworks Consulting to perform a feasibility analysis for experience, which is a sustainability demonstration center. WRCOG is finalizing several documents related to the implementation of the TUMF program, including an updated fee calculation handbook and TUMF reimbursement manual. Both documents will be reviewed and approved by WRCOG committees before the end of the year. I also wanted to mention that as far as the uh, LED holiday light exchange, which is basically a um, starter kit giveaway, where California Edison and gas customers can exchange uh, old lights uh, will be done on December 9th at the Marina Valley Snow Day and Holiday Tree Lighting Ceremony. That completes my comments and report for the WRCOG. And the next one is um, RCA, which is uh, Council Member Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Oh, oh, now now we can. Just had our meeting uh, for the RCA. And it was a very short meeting, but the, the two major items, um, uh, three three items I'll just throw at you is one is the what they call the local development mitigation fee collections. Uh, so for the month of August, um, the RCA, if you don't real RCA is it purchases land to uh, preserve species of uh, um, organisms, both plant and animal. And so the August collections were $1,648,699, uh, just specifically um, for the month of July, Moreno Valley uh, was very busy. Remember, these are fees you collect from the developers uh, for these mitigations. And so the city of Moreno Valley had collected fees in the, f in the amount of $297,184 to contribute to the mitigation of those properties. The only one that had a larger one was the uh, city of Riverside at 600 74,920, which means that we're pretty active in our community with our developments. Uh, the other item that was on the agenda was the, um, I gotta find it, I'm just gonna go through this for you. Um,
Just had it. it was a resolution, resolution number 2017-006, uh, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Western Riverside County Regional Conservation Authority declaring support for the establishment of a national wildlife refuge within the boundaries of the Western Riverside County Multiple Species Habitat Conservation Plan. This would be more out to the east side. And um, the reason is we're trying to make more uh, uh, area. Now this is just now a study for all intents and purposes. It's now being done. It's not a cast in stone at this point. So all the resolution does is it says um, support for the establishment of. And so now the study will continue to go forward. Uh, the last and final thing was uh, property acquisitions to date. Uh, 56,000 acres have been acquired so far. That's 30% of the needed. So I guess it's a long way to go. So there's, um, that's only 30, 37% of the total acquisitions that we're trying to get to. Uh, so that's the RCA report. Thank you. Councilman Rickai, but go ahead, if you could give your SCAG report, please, because there's no school district. No, thank you very much. All right, um, and I'll, I'll combine the other one for you, too. Uh, SCAG, um, there's not, not much going on because I have a SCAG meeting this Thursday. So as usual, Raphael, 620, the train leaves from San Bernardino in the morning. You're welcome to join me for the day, and anybody else who'd like to go uh, and see what it's like to go to Los Angeles and spend a day. Uh, I actually sit, uh, sit on two of the major councils but I'm there for the thir all three of them. Um, so it's a long day, I call it my SCAG day. Uh, but I did uh, meet with, the, uh, I'm on the SCAG Legislative Action Committee, so we met on a variety of things. Sc SCAG's main concern is transportation, and uh, that's the main uh, um, um, uh, 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 legislation that we're all the time, many times looking at. Uh, in addition to that, I also sit on the League of Cities Legislative Action Committee, and that's coming up this Wednesday. So we'll be looking through several bills, and of course, the city of um, the uh, League of California Cities is more concerned with a variety of issues that affect our cities. So I'll be there for you on that one. Nice piece of information I want to pass on. I'm excited about this. On November the 14th of this month, we've got a study session. Michelle is at, that's uh, told me that's cast in stone now, um, and I've invited um, Lucy Jones, and Lucy Jones has graciously accepted that invitation. Now, for those of you who don't know who Lucy Jones is, she's normally known as the earthquake lady. Um, and so SCAG has representing uh, what they call the Earthquake Sustainability Initiative. Um, and they want to start working together in a regional capacity uh, in case we have one of these huge problems with if the San Andreas Fault falls. So that'll be the start um, that I'm trying to drive forward. I've been working with some other regional individuals from other cities and other districts. Uh, and other regions. I've been reaching out and uh, they're all on board so far. We'll get a chance to have that meeting and, and we can all come together and start building a community. Um, Abdul is um, on board with it. We've already had our meetings on that so he's familiar with what's going on. It's an emergency for long-term, understand, long-term sustainability. What we're seeing, Rafael, in, in Puerto Rico, what we're seeing down in the southern Gulf regions, when these catastrophes happen, we have to be able to recover or at least survive for periods of time until we can recover. And that comes with preparation. And so it's my desire to try to drive this earthquake, San Andreas fault issue, so that we have a regional plan for sustainability in the event that we lose electricity, gas, water, et cetera. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of, Martin, when, right? So um, that, that's an exciting thing uh, coming up um, via SCAG's uh, initiatives. So I'll keep you posted on that, but put that date down. November the 14th, it's a study session here. Lucy Jones will have her presentation and invite all of the local community. Um, so I will be, uh, from now until then, I'll be working to bring some coalition of, of individuals from the region together so that we can begin building that, that, that team. Okay, so thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Um, city Manager's report? No report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. City Attorney's report? No report this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, this brings us to reports and comments from Council Members who did not speak earlier. Um, I don't think we've ever had a Council Member that's really spoken earlier. <laughs> I think we've all wanted to speak. That, that was LaDonna's thing. <laughs> I think she always wanted to speak first. So, um, okay, so Council Member Gaiva, your closing comments? I can be happy to do that. First of all, um, coming up on this Saturday, uh, the 7th, um, I have another Java with Jeff. 
I'm trying to have those more frequently so that I can educate the population as to what's going on in our city uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, it'll be at the Paris Cre Crepes uh, in the Canyon Spring Shopping Center on the corner of Day Street and Ironwood from 9 to 11. And uh, I will have, uh, um, and there'll be a couple of the staff. They always like to come and help, it, help me out on that. Someone from finance will be there. I know somebody from economic development will be there. Um, so please come. The, the crepes, that's how you say it, right? Crepes and coffee are on me. So, um, uh, you know, it's out of my discretionary funny. Um, I'm going to ask uh, um, um, for, I'll finish this up, and then I'm going to ask Mike Lloyd to please give a, just a quick update because I normally go to Mobility 21 in Anaheim. Do you mind, Michelle? And uh, uh, what I did is I, I couldn't attend um, due to some issues that I, I couldn't make. So I asked Michael Lloyd to attend on my behalf, and, and I'd like him to share. But m I'll finish this up, and then you can be the final portion of it and just give a little say. Yeah. We um, worked real hard on these, and um, Marshall did a great job. From the CDBG grant program, and if you can home in on this, uh, we developed these uh, local resource guides. Now, the police have taken a lot of mine already because they like to hand them out to the homeless. And this is the resource guide that we worked on those first couple of years. Remember the CDB? And i got to tell Marshall, he's done a marvelous job. So this resource guide is broken down into different categories, shelters, and it has the names, the addresses, the phone numbers, emergency housing, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got more of these on, on order, right? These are a marvelous resource for the community at large. So please um, um, try to get yourself some hands on these. And some of you, especially uh, the nonprofits, should have some of these together. We worked on this for a while, and now it's out. This is the city of Moreno Valley every year. Uh, we put out, Marshall's team puts out this uh, document called Citizen's Guide to the Budget, something we worked on very hard so that the, uh, being an educator, I think the public needs to understand how the budget works, and so these are very simplified guides. They are available here on site, am I correct? We can get those anytime so that the public can come and get them and start learning more about how we do our budgets. Uh, the other one is a, what we call the PAFR, when we did our, um, our, our uh, CAFR, which is our, our annual audit, uh, we requested that um, uh, we work on something that's very simplified, because if you guys haven't seen the CAFR, it's about this thick. All right, so it's a pretty thick document, but Marshall and his team has done a wonderful job of putting together a very simplified version so that the public can understand what the annual audit is all about. Another one that came out of all that work that we did on the, on the um, bond uh, stuff with the uh, Reno Valley utility, that drove us forward to being able to compile all of our bonds and how we're doing them because you don't want to be in a position where financially you're going to be hurt. So. Uh, again, working together with the Finance Department and Marshall over the past couple of years, we came up with a bonded debt program. This, this tells us all about our city's bonded debt, very simplified for the public to understand. These are all available for you, so if you want to educate yourselves. And last but not least, this is something that we worked on with Jeanette when I was on the uh, uh, Utility Commission, is we now have the, here's the 215-216 annual report so the public understands how we're doing with our, um, mun our, our um, Marina Valley utility. So this one is also available for you to learn more about. Education for me is very important. Uh, the public needs to understand you can't make decisions and help us make decisions if you don't have the information. So all these have been generated in order for the public to easily understand what's going on. So please pick yourself up some of these. They will also be available at my Java with Jeff so that you can get them when you come and see me. Thank you. Okay, um, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment on a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, City Manager Michelle Dawson. Um, I requested an update on the uh, repairs to the fence over on LaSalle in front of uh, Rancho Verde High School. And uh, she's she's been... Um, she's been on top of that, so I actually passed by there, I believe it was two days ago, and it's it's fixed. So it looks back to normal, uh, good as new, so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> also, um, regarding some comments that were made about the, um, the Moreno Valley Logistics Center, 
Uh, I will be out in that neighborhood next weekend uh, to speak with residents about the project. Um, I'm ready to to hear some more opinions on that, see what residents have to say. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that next weekend. Um, also, um, I, I would like to say uh, to Ms. Dell, Kathleen Dell, I requested a meeting um, with you today. So hopefully you should be uh, receiving something. I think your, your email box or something was full. So, um, or your voicemail box was full. So um, I just wanted to let you know about that. I look forward to sitting down with you. And last but not least, the Homeless to Work program. Um, I'm real excited about that. I know we're all looking forward to that. Um, uh, residents have been talking about that and asking for it for a very long time. So uh, any opportunity that, that I get to volunteer, I will be out there. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to help people. That's why I'm here, to help make our city a better place. And so um, looking forward to that. And Lieutenant Kane and his wife are here anymore, but I, I want to thank them as well. Um, they're amazing people, amazing individuals, and they have a heart for these kind of things. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that Homeless to Work program. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Baca. Yes, I also want to say thank you to the Salvation Army for stepping up to the plate and taking this endeavor on. Um, it's very important. I know that there's never going to be 100% um, satisfaction with everyone out there. And there's uh, criticism about you know putting our homeless to work. It's it's a voluntary program, and anybody can um, benefit from it if you're homeless. Let's give them that opportunity. And I want to thank the mayor for bringing this to the city, and also um, wish the best of luck to this program because I, I think it's very needed. There's a lot of need out there, and hopefully we can fill that need. I also want to say. Um, to uh, Rafael Brugueras that uh, your family is in our prayers in and, and all of Puerto Rico, and, uh, Texas, Florida, and especially today with what happened with um, Nevada, with Las Vegas. Um, you know, what, what, what can we say? What can we say? It's, um, there's no words for the devastation that took place, the inhumanity, the madness um, that took place. Um, well, actually, it was last night, but what we woke up to this morning. So with that, um, I just want to say that um, our police officers are out there. They're doing their best. Um, there are some crimes that, even if you ask them, are not preventable because we, we're not inside homes. We're not inside you know, uh, people's heads. We're not mind readers. But we do the best we can to keep this community safe. And I think that it is a safer community today than it was uh, a few years back. Um, I also want to say that, thank God, we're in the, um, the fall and autumn, and we have the summer behind us. Uh, I do have some concerns with um, how we supported the drought. I think we said, go brown, support the drought, or some, some slogan like that. And some of the uh, community is complaining or concerned that they're being ticket getting tickets or citations from our code enforcement, if we can look into that. Because, I mean, we, we told them conserve water. So our, our, I mean, even mine, my grass died because we turned off the sprinklers. So let's, let's be a little more uh, conscientious about what we're doing out in the community. If uh, people are starting to grow their grass back, I can understand that. But if there's, you know, because they can't afford the water, what do you, what do? You do? So we need to look at that. Maybe um, uh, have a report back at the next meeting regarding what we can do um, for our community that has let their lawns die, their you know, nice gardening. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about that. And um, I just want to say that Moreno Valley is moving forward. We have new restaurants. It's becoming a more vibrant community. And I hope that you stay on this side of Day Street, go to Pyology, to uh, uh, Popeye's Chicken. You know, We don't need to cross the street on the other side of Day. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Pertambaca. I just wanted to say I'm really excited about uh, the Homeless to Work program as well. I know that it's been a lot of work, uh, especially at the staff level, too, meeting with uh, the Salvation Army uh, multiple times, uh, waste management, uh, various partners uh, to get the program up and running. And so they were very excited to be here as well. Um, and I think it just it's going to take all of us in order to make the program work. And, you know, we have to remember that the reason why we want the program to work 
is to help the homeless population. So to provide those wraparound services, really figure out, you know, how we can give them the right resources um, in order to get them on their feet. So it's going to take all of us uh, to embrace it and to help uh, the Salvation Army find uh, where the homeless are actually located. I mean, they're going to do a job of going out there and, and finding them and then offering uh, these assignments uh, to them and going through the whole intake process and providing the services. But I think also they need our help too as well. So um, I want to say that um, Roy Bleckard, uh, who helped um, with this idea as well, um, is uh, willing to take that on as well. And so, and I know other community members as well that are willing to go out in the community and figure out, okay, where the homeless are located. So um, I want to say thank you uh, to all of the community members that are willing uh, to do that. I also want to thank um, the staff as well for their work with the Latin Film Festival, which is coming up October 27th through the 29th, which will be a Friday through Sunday at the Harkins Movie Theater. Thank you. And there will be an art walk as well. This Friday, I'm having a uh, business roundtable with uh, various uh, businesses in the business community just to hear uh, from uh, from them, you know, about their needs, and then also to let them know about the services that we're providing at the city, like, for example, Hire a Move Out One, Two, Hire a Grad, those kinds of programs to incentivize uh, local hires. And I just want to close uh, in memory of the Las Vegas victims tonight um, for the cruelty that, I mean, that was just terrible cruelty. I mean, there's no words that we can express how we feel. But let's close in memory of the Las Vegas victims uh, tonight. 